Welcome to another episode of Inside the Firkin, where we take a quick look at a day in the life of uh, consulting. This time we're on to another episode of Travis Tolson's blog posts about uh, script include patterns. Um, so take it away, Dorian. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, like shout out to, to, to Travis for all the work that he's he put into that uh, article. And yeah. for those that are just uh, filming in, like we're we're describing different architectural patterns you could use to set up your your script includes. Mm -hmm. um, we started our first session on the class uh, pattern, then we moved on to the functional pattern, then we moved on to the namespace pattern, and now we're into the uh, global include pattern. Um, so we'll kind of jump right in on our. On our screen here, we essentially see, um, you know, I named it global include pattern. So some pros uh, about this one is your it, it helps you uh, organ. Oh, I actually this is copy and pasted. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that that okay that's interesting. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe I didn't oh, even. Man. Uh, yeah, I guess, no, no, this is right. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm going crazy. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the only thing here is this, this pro, that one. Yeah, so okay. essentially right. um, some of the pros is it allows monkey patching. And so essentially what monkey patching is, is like a term when you want to change existing objects or classes, because essentially what you're doing is, uh, I lost John, but um, essentially what you're doing is you're changing a, an existing object because you're loading in uh, the entire object as is. Um, and it also allows you to um, uh, include external libraries. So this is a really, really good pattern for if you wanted to, to utilize like moment.js, which you've seen a few, in a few different places. Um, or if you just want to include an, uh, another script and then modify essentially its, its functions. So some of the cons, again, like functions aren't truly private in here and it does have to be in global scope. So mm. that's definitely something that you wanna, you wanna be careful of. It will yell at you when you're, if you're not. And so kinda, so there aren't really any good examples uh, in the system that that do this but i think the most common one is you have some external library you want to you want to utilize that is supported for like javascript 2015 <laughs> um, because <laughs> if you do try to import something that uses like cons or lead or any of the emacs 6 stuff then um you're you're going to run into some some issues compile issues yeah um, but uh, as for what this pattern looks like to utilize it, so that's not where my ATF is. So we're going to open up an ATF, and we have another uh, ATF for this one. And pretty much the, the same thing for the parameter definitions. The data set looks the same, whether someone's locked, uh, locked out or not. Um, really, the only major difference here is inside this server-side script. Um, so essentially here, the difference is, is you include, um, so you call gs.include uh, of that, and that essentially makes it available, right? Like as if it was a function that exists um, in, your, in your normal code. Um, so it essentially loads it here, and then you have access to those, uh, to those, those pieces. And so like as you can see here, I, you know, if the locked out user, you know, call this that private function, um, then call the the other function that I had in here, and then do some, you know, expect some results out of it. So um, pretty pretty similar process uh, that we that we were following from before. And so what we'll do is run this test. We have some breakpoints. Oh, but I I just ran it. I didn't actually click debug. So. And our test failed probably because it has the same bug that I didn't fix last time. <laughs> um, but that, that's okay, right? I, again, these are these are meant to more show you the pattern and, and 
and and how you can utilize ATFs. But you know the the code itself, like notice here, right? It looks like just a bunch of functions, right? So mm -hmm. you can organize it um, all your functions in one place. You then use the the GS dot include. Um, I'll go back to that. So you you essentially create your global include pattern. You load up all of the functions that you want in here that you want it to be called. So you, there is some organization that you can do with your functions. And then you call gs.include and that, that loads it into this, this script um, for you to call uh, in the future. So you can just call any of the specific functions out of that script include after you've included it, right? You don't have to correct do anything else. It's, it's as if they are in that context available. Yep. So definitely useful for external libraries, right? If you wanted to use Moment yeah. JS, for example, is the most common one that I've seen. Um, and, and, and yeah, it, 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 you, I don't see it as common to like call your other functions to do a GS include elsewhere. Um, but as I said, like you could use it for monkey patching. So what you could do is like, you know, add objects to like, since this instantiates a, a function, you can call that function and then, you know, potentially modify some objects in there and then, you know, continue down the route of, of utilizing it. Um, but yeah, a, a very simple one, not very commonly used, but yeah. definitely useful to, to know. Um, and you, and you said you were, you were bound by global. There wasn't a way to, there's not a way to use it within a scope app. You would, you have to have it in global. Yeah, so just the, the GS function dot GS dot include isn't in scoped, at least from the ServiceNow's documentation. So it will yell at you if you try to GS include uh, uh, something that isn't in the, in the scope, <laughs> in the global scope. Oh, yes. Yeah. Cool. Well, no, I, I mean, it, it makes sense with, with Moment. I mean, I hate dealing with dates, and Moment does mm -hmm. make it so much easier. And so... Yeah, that that's the one thing I can see working, but the the problem there is if you're working outside of, of global and you need to do it. Yeah, so that's why it's a, like the global include pattern, right? It's not it's probably not yeah. as useful as the like some of the other scoped ones. Um, sure, sure. But yeah, that's I mean that's you could in theory with some work take some of the moment js stuff throw it in a script include pattern that we've talked about before and mm -hmm. then call it um so not as straightforward but totally a a plausible uh a, a route you could take sure sure well good all right is that uh, how many of those are left is that was that the last one so that was the 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 last one before what Travis would call the perfect one. <laughs> <laughs> so we have one more on uh, two days from now, and okay. uh, we will uh, we'll, we'll go over that one, and that should be one of the the most utilized ones if you're not using the class one in, in my in my opinion. Okay. So. All right. So I, I had a question though, and this is kind of outside of what we were just doing, but it, it came to me as you were talking at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, when you mentioned that you know it's got to be uh workable in, in emacs what is it five 2015 yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what do you think service now is going to do um in the future to get us on a newer version or or do you think it's like because i foresee it it needing to happen at some point they've got to get us off this old emacs version but i, yeah. I worry I mean, is is uh, is it backwards compatible as you go forward? So, um, so if you remember, what was that website I sent you? Like the Babel, Babel yeah, like Babel, the, the, the Babel Six or, mm -hmm. or something like that. I think yeah. that's the route ServiceNow is going to take. Is they're going to, you know, build another build some, translator, <laughs> like a translator or compiler. That's the only way they could do it without it like breaking a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and, and I think that you've seen that in the the compatibility switch on on the test scripts that exist today. There there is a way to even go to a further compatibility, a further older one than uh, than the 2015 one. So okay, well I'm excited. Once they do move up, I, I would like 
more of the features. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think the world is ready for it. <laughs> That's so true. Well, you know, Babel, if I remember the last time I looked at it, they were like, oh, we're going to stop uh, allowing you to choose 2015. <laughs> yeah. Like you can't even go back that far to convert it anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's. I mean, at some point they're gonna need to 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 cut it and and hopefully provide some mechanism to convert code for people. Yeah, yeah, because I, so, I yeah, it's a lot or even their their own internal code. They have tons of scripts that they would need to make sure is compatible. So so true, so true. It's a big. Well, effort. all right. Uh, do we have anything else? <laughs> no, no. I, I think that's it. So we'll see Sweet. you guys in a few days for the the yeah. final one of the series. All right. And if you like it, subscribe. I don't know where the button is. It's somewhere. Yeah. Right yeah. Here. <laughs> it's there. 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 <laughs> there. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you.